Evening, gang. Okay, Wednesday evening here, about 7.30ish, I guess. And I was kind of doing a little bit of digging around, just kind of reading some economic figures and stuff like that, and came across something I thought was kind of interesting. Now, many of you probably saw that CPI numbers came out earlier this week and said that, uh, you know, inflation went up six-tenths of a percent in March. Okay. And everybody goes, eh, six-tenths of a percent is not that much. Okay, But if you multiply that out over 12 months, you know, if we had the same thing, that would be 7.2% inflation over the course of the year. Now, we all are seeing this. We've talked about it quite often. And, you know, the feds come out and say, uh, gee, you know, inflation's running 25 to 3%. That's within the normal range, everything like that. Now... Like I just said, if we had 0.6 in March, that would extrapolate out to 7.2% over the year. 7.2 and 2.5 to 3 don't sound the same to me, but let's go into a little bit further. Now, depending on what you're buying, okay, the, the inflation rate is going to be different in every household. And the way the government figures it out is it's that includes the cost of housing, and this is all weighted, okay? So the cost of housing, the cost of food and non-alcoholic beverages, the cost of rec recreation, the cost of transportation, uh, furnishings, household equipment, alcohol and tobacco, health care, insurance, financial products, education, clothing and footwear, and communications. Now notice one that's not in there is gasoline, okay? And we all know how that goes crazy and we've all seen it you know gas is up uh what 80 cents a gallon or what no, about a, about 30 percent since the, since the inauguration so you know that one's not included but here's where it gets interesting okay and you know we all know the old saying numbers don't lie people do uh if you take a look at the way inflation is calculated over history, okay? And mind you, the CPI started being used, consumer price index started being used in 1984. They took the average price of everything from 82 to 84, assigned that with a target number of, of 100, and then wherever we go from there is what how they calculate the inflation rate. The problem is they've changed the way they, they calculate inflation in the, from the 80s to the 90s and to now. So if we were still calculating inflation the way we did when the CPI originally came out in 1980, that would mean inflation right now is running at about 10%, okay? Which I think is a lot more accurate for what y'all and I are seeing in regards to what things cost. Now, Unless you're getting a 10% raise a year uh, where your bills are going down 10%, it's costing you more money to buy this year than what you bought last year. And we all know that. We all see it. You know, our, We know our paychecks haven't gone up and we know the price of everything's gone up. I mean, what you could buy for, I think it's like 63 cents in 2000 will now cost you a dollar. Okay, So that'll give you an idea of what inflation is. But here's the catch, okay? And like I said, if we were at 6%, uh, according to their numbers, 0.6%, which if you extrapolated that out, would be 7.2 over the course of the year, 0.6 times 12, okay? Now here's my question for you. At 7.2% annual inflation, how long does it take for the price of something to double? And this is where everybody gets everything messed up, okay? And you go, okay, well, let's see, you know, 7.2 to double everything like that. Oh, if I do the math out there, it's like 14 years or something like that, or 15 years. No, actually, it's 10 on the nose, okay? Rule of 72. If something costs a dollar today, a year from now at 7.2, it would be a dollar 7.2% next, uh, 0.2 cents next year. Now, that 7.2% inflation for, in my hypothetical here, 2023 wouldn't be 7.2 percent of the dollar it would be 7.2 percent of a dollar 7.2 and so that's where everything kind of extrapolates up and up and up so 
that's where you're seeing the prices get more expensive as compared to your paycheck. Now, you know, some of us, again, are old enough to remember inflation during the Jimmy Carter years and, you know, the beginning of the Reagan presidency and everything. That's actually where we are. But those numbers don't sound good for, you know, the Treasury, for the government to put out. So they've changed the calculations so they can make it sound like the economy's just humming along, you know, 2% annual inflation and that's it. Ask anybody who's on Social Security when they get their cost of living raise, if they get their cost of living raise, and Social Security went up 2%, 2.5%, you know, COLA, as you all get. Well, the problem is that's based on the current calculation, not the accurate cal calculation, the true calculation. So while somebody's getting that 2% cost of living ra raise, even in your paycheck, some companies give a COLA raise every year too. It's not keeping up with true inflation, which true inflation calculated as though it was back in the 1970s, like I said, is 10%. Now, if you think about that and the rule of 72, that means in seven years, the price of everything you have is going to double, all right? Now, if you own a house and the value of your house doubles, hey, fabulous, you've got some extra money that way, especially if you're gonna go retire off to Costa Rica or something like that, you can sell your house and move down to Costa Rica. Who knows? Yeah, just an example, okay? But the other thing this tells you too is how to budget something if we stick around where we are now. You know, average car. People drive a car for about 10 years. Now, we all know you're going to buy a new car now. I think that what I say the other day, the average new car is $47,000 or somewhere thereabouts. God knows I'm not ever buying a new car again, but for the sake of argument here, let's say it's $47,000. That means in 10 years, that new car is going to cost you $94,000. And I'm not talking about going and buying some Mercedes or Porsche or something like that. I mean, that's to buy your everyday Buick, okay? So I thought I'd give you guys this real quick just to see what's going on when I tripped across the, the accurate calculations on how inflation should be and what the current calculations are, you know, as normal, you're being lied to, uh, but you know, we've all figured it out. And, you know, again, if we're at this kind of inflation, hyperinflation is defined at 50% inflation. So keep an eye on this because if we're accurately at 10 now and nothing's happened around the world yet, I mean, let some of this stuff go off in Asia or in Europe or in the Middle East or anything like that and watch what happens. This is why a lot of us are telling you about hyperinflation and you hear these 2% numbers and go, that can't be right. It's because it's not. Have a good evening. Pinball out.